If you remember, we could see the minaret of our next objective, Sokolu Memi Pasha Mosque, as we left Kachakaya Sofia. So let's make our way over there. Now then, how do we get there? Well, quite easily, actually. Designed by Sinan, at the request of Sokolu Mehmed Pasha, around 1571. As a politician, he rose through the ranks to become chief minister in 1565, quite a usual career path for non-Ottoman people in the Ottoman Empire. He also had success as a naval commander, and among other achievements, captured Tunis in 1574. Whilst we've been looking round, here, you have perhaps heard that there's some boys around here. Well, yes, the building across the courtyard from the mosque is a madrasa, a school. We'll have a look inside the mosque, but I want to tell you what happened there. I got my usual friendly welcome from the man there. He told me that a few weeks ago he showed Prince Charles around the building. I think I then overestimated this man's skill, in conversing in the English language. I decided to say that I always received a nice welcome in mosques and then launched into the story of what happened to me in that church on Istiklal Street. This is black stone from the Kaaba. I'm only guessing, really, but I think the man got a bit lost here, and thought that this story was in some way, having a knock at him, or something, and he went a bit cold on me. If you know this man, will you explain things to him, for me, please? This chap's wanting to lock up now, so we're gonna have to finish very quickly as the lock me in. This mosque is in a residential suburb, and we need to be finding our way down to the seafront. Road signs here. Looks like the sea might be that way, and we even find a way to cross the railway. So the next question is, how do we get across the road? Traffic lights, obviously. This part of the shore is restaurants all the way. It's like Scarborough with knobs on, but they are all fish restaurants and the only thing I can manage is smooth lentil soup. One chap advised me to go back across the road, where I would find more restaurants, and this nice man here conjured up a bowl of lentil soup for me. And near those restaurants was a station, and we've come down a couple of stops to Yadikula. And we are leaving the station after getting some information about which way to head for the walls. General direction seems to be to head this way. I hope I can remember how to get back. Well, looks quite promising, doesn't it? These walls stretch from the Sea of Marmira coast, here, to the Golden Horn shore, and we have now seen them at several places. They were built around 412 to 422, during the reign of Theodosius II. Now this narrow gateway here, seems to have been an opportunity, and I'm guessing here, for some local chaps to get a whistle and control two-way traffic, safely through the opening. 
so back to the story of the walls, they remained unbreached for over a thousand years until the successful Ottoman attack in 1453. The fourth crusade attack was on the walls which ran along the coastline. In Byzantine days, the gate at this point in the walls was called the Golden Gate. It was used exclusively by the Empress. After the Ottoman takeover, the Sultan added five towers built around the gate, effectively making it a seven-towered castle. This was first used as a treasury, but eventually as a prison, likened by some, to the Bastille. This gate now also serves as the starting point for this suburban bus service. Now I successfully found my way back to the railway station, where I was joined by two new Good. friends. Good. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, good. I'll go backwards and get you on as well. So we are now making our way back to central Istanbul, on the line which runs along the shoreline. We'll go right back to the central station, and get a tram back to the hotel. Tomorrow, we need to catch a tram about 12 o'clock, to get to the airport. So that means we will have two or three hours, to look round the museum, which is just down the road from the hotel. <laughs> 